And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Hello, I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan with your Alaska Aviation Weather Outlook that'll take us into the early week, Monday and Tuesday. And what we are watching as of this Sunday, there's low pressure in the North Pacific and on Monday, that low is gonna cross the Alaska Peninsula and work its way uh, north, northwestward. And overall, the pattern has changed from what it was in mid-January, early February. We've seen a general uh, moderation and warming of temperatures across much of the state and a continued southerly, southeast southerly flow of air coming into the mainland. Uh, high pressure will be reestablishing itself over uh, British Columbia, the Yukon, Northwest Territories here through this uh, upcoming week. So we're looking at southeast to south flow as the storm track comes up across uh, the Alaska Peninsula and then moves up through the eastern bearing along the west uh, coast. Those areas there will see periods of snow or mixed precipitation uh, along with uh, some milder temperatures. It's definitely not going to be nearly as cold as it was. As a result of this milder air continuing just to stream northward, in the morning hours that leads to some lower stratus and areas potentially of some ice fog here in through the interior with the IFR conditions. We have another batch of precipitation coming up out of uh, a rather compact low, it has a lot of wind around it too. Uh, so as a result, there could be uh, turbulence and low level wind shear with this feature as it lifts uh, uh, northward. And for Monday afternoon, we find strong little low right in this region. So some pretty uh, gusty winds up along the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians, up into the southwest. There could be some isolated areas of severe turbulence with that feature. IFR conditions uh, and some of the precipitation that's uh, wrapped around it, but it's a rather compact low. We expect some better conditions along the Alcan border Monday afternoon. Pockets of IFR around Prince William Sound, the east side of the Kenai and then Tuesday morning as that low continues to lift northward we find areas of IFR all along the west coast again snow and some areas of mixed precipitation could be a little bit of rain or, or even a little freezing rain mixed in but overall again when you have southeast to south flow coming in across the mainland still over the cooler uh, snow covered ground it's going to result in especially in some of the valleys uh, areas of lower stratus and a little um, some freezing fog. So temperatures uh, Tuesday will continue to be rather mild southern areas and again we see another plume of moisture coming into the Alaska Peninsula across Kodiak Island, the Lake Iliamna region into the southwest interior north of Dillingham. Also areas along from the other low that's lifting further north and the remnants of that Bering Strait, west side of the Seward Peninsula, up along up to Point Hope. We expect to see some areas of IFR there. Now, past conditions. On uh, Monday, we are anticipating Anatovic Pass, generally MVFR, but IFR conditions uh, south of there in the morning, especially. And then Adigan Pass, we expect uh, MVF MVFR conditions, though IFR certainly possible, a southern entrance area there on uh, Monday morning. IFR conditions along the west arm of the Alaska Range kind of holding there within Lake Clark and Merrill Passes, Rainy Pass, also the tendency for some IFR conditions to lag there as we're getting just that moist and milder flow of air coming in from the southeast to south flow at the lower levels. Uh, Windy Pass, generally MVFR conditions, Isabel MVFR. Uh, far East Alaska Range, Mentasta Pass, VFR conditions, uh, with MVFR conditions down across the Copper River. Uh, Basin, Tanita Pass, generally MVFR. Portage Pass, we'll see generally MVFR passes, uh, conditions within the pass, but IFR conditions out over uh, Prince William Sound. And then in the far northern part of the uh, Panhandle, we expect IFR conditions becoming MVFR on Monday. So the surface freezing line will be uh, running up uh, north of the Alaska Peninsula to along Bristol Bay coastline sneaking up through Cook Inlet and then along the east side of the Kenai and along the Gulf Coast into the uh, inner channels here of the lower, lower southern part of the Panhandle. And freezing levels aloft have bumped up two to 4,000 feet uh, from the Gulf down into the North Pacific as there's just a broad area of, of warmer air aloft that's gonna continue to expand back toward the north and northwest, in part because we have uh, high pressure reestablishing itself here over Northwest Canada. And then the primary 
storm track and some plumes of moisture coming up out of the North Pacific. So the greatest threat for some icing will be along areas uh, North Pacific uh, uh, side of the Alaska Peninsula, some pockets perhaps, the upslope coming here along areas of uh, the south side of the Alaska Range and also up along uh, areas of the Chukchi Sea, generally surface to 3,000 feet. Once you get once you get above 3,000 feet, especially because that's where uh, you have the cloud bases and any sort of precipitation uh, higher up. Looking at the anticyclonically curved, there's a ridge, a mid and upper level ridge also going to be building back in through this region. If it were summertime, it would lead to some very warm temperatures, but it's still winter and it's tough. Uh, the, the valleys of the interior hang on to the cold air, even though you get the warming aloft. So that's a very stable situation. It tends to produce stable uh, at times, uh, low level cloudiness and uh, certainly favors fog formation and things like that in areas. As, as things moisten up, but we have winds uh, 110, 120 knots into the southwest at 700 millibars. Uh, we see the high center uh, at, at about uh, 9,000 feet and a broad belt of 50 to 70 knot southerly winds. So this is, this is significant. This is going to cause some strong winds along the ridge lines of the Alaska Range, so uh, some severe turbulence possible there. And then at 3,000 feet with the low that's lifting up, this is a little compact low. Uh, along Bristol Bay, winds in excess of 50 knots from the south, coming across uh, Lake Eliamna and up on the east and south southern areas of Kodiak Island. So as a result, we do expect the potential for some severe turbulence here along areas of the Alaska Peninsula. I would even say even along coastal areas of, of uh, Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, and then also up along uh, the ridge lines here in, in the gaps uh, of uh, the Alaska Range surface to 10,000 feet. Overall, too, with the compactness of this circulation around the low, there could be some low-level wind shear within this region of the southwest and the Alaska Peninsula, so be aware of that. And as I said, overall, this pattern is going to uh, set up and hold itself through the upcoming week.